Let's talk about fertigation, a more advanced method of nutrient delivery. It's grow time. Fertigation refers to any method of injecting fertilizer into an irrigation system. Anyone interested in automation or improving nutrient cost efficiency will want to consider mixing stock tanks for use with a fertigation system. Hydroponic Research developed Dose A plus B, a nutrient program specifically designed for use with fertigation. We'll talk more about that in a moment. First, let's understand a little more about fertigation. Delivery methods might include peristaltic pumps, diaphragms, solenoids, or hydraulics in order to inject fertilizer. Behind me, you'll notice a dosatron configuration, a widely used fertigation system in the industry that is fully compatible with Hydroponic Research's Dose A plus B fertilizer program. The diagram shows the hydroponic research configuration for this setup. Starting from the left, a centrifugal pump like this dab pump is used to draw from a water source and pressurize the system. The injectors are adjusted at the dials to dose concentrated nutrient at a specific rate into the irrigation line. As water pushes through the injectors, hydraulic pressure incrementally draws from the mixed stock solutions determined by the volume of water passing through. Each input or fertilizer part is injected and mixed into the line in succession to create your desired nutrient solution. Later in this video, we'll talk about how pressure compensated top drip irrigation coupled with Fertigation methods allows us to deliver very precise volumes of nutrient solution with controlled delivery time. Hydroponic research began with Veg Plus Bloom's powder formula, which was introduced over a decade ago as the most complete one part base fertilizer available in the industry. Increased use of this fertigation system by growers and the growing demand for a stock solution inspired the creation of Dose A plus B, Hydroponic Research's nutrient program formulated for fertigation. Stock tanks require solutions to be dissolved in high concentrations for use with injectors. For this reason, the dose formula is separated into two parts in order to avoid unwanted reactions between calcium and sulfur. We suggest mixing each stock tank thoroughly at one pound per gallon. This 25 pounds of dose, for example, should be dissolved in 25 gallons of water. Also note, stacks and shine can also be dissolved at the same rate when used in stock solution. A small mixing pump programmed to recirculate stock tanks 30 minutes before watering events can be used to keep solutions from being stagnant. Once your stock tanks are dissolved, you'll want to adjust your injectors to reach the target EC of each input. For best results, part A and part B of dose should always be injected in equal parts. If we want to reach a combined EC of 2.0 for our dose inputs, we'll do as follows. With all of the other injectors shut off, start with the dose part A injector activated. Now, pressurize the line and observe your EC. If the EC doesn't read 1.0, then adjust your injector as necessary. Once your target EC is reached, then turn on the injector for your Part B stock tank and repeat the same steps to reach the target EC of 2.0 for dose A plus B. Repeat these same steps for your remaining inputs such as stacks or shine to reach your overall target EC. After the formula is mixed as desired through the injectors, the nutrient solution can be delivered directly to irrigate plants or sent to batch tanks for later distribution to plant sites. In either case, the type of irrigation will determine how precise our nutrient delivery can be. Let's talk about that now. 
Hydroponic gardening is about controlling variables and optimizing conditions to support plant growth. Essential among these variables is how much and how often a plant gets watered. In order to have the most control over watering events, it's necessary to utilize pressure compensating drip emitters to deliver nutrient solution. Pressure compensating drip emitters are designed at specific rates of delivery ranging from under one third of a gallon per hour to upwards of seven gallons per hour. We are able to deliver exactly how much we want by controlling length of time of our watering events. For example, if we are using six by six by six rock wool in our garden, the recommended emitter size is one third gallon per hour or the equivalent of 1200 milliliters per gallon. As the chart shows, the recommended irrigation volume is 101.25 milliliters per watering event during the vegetative cycle. This equates to running irrigation for two minutes and 32 seconds. Frequency of waterings per day will vary depending on plant development and growth cycle. However, the volume per watering should remain consistent once established throughout the cycle. Higher irrigation volumes can become necessary during the generative growth cycle. Adjustments to watering frequencies and intervals should be made to reach desired watering runoff. In addition to allowing for precise watering volumes, pressure compensating drip emitters are built with an internal check valve mechanism that eliminates drainage of your irrigation lines. That means when your pump shuts off, your lines don't require refilling during the next watering event. This results in uniform flow distribution. Your crops are irrigated evenly and you avoid both overwatering and underwatering different sections of your garden. An increasingly common metric being used to measure the value of nutrients is the cost per gallon. To put it simply, it's how much it costs to mix a nutrient formula into a gallon of water at its recommended dilution rate. While this is a helpful stat to consider for your garden, it's certainly a very limited perspective of measuring the overall effectiveness of your fertilizer. Of course, we want to lower our costs, but we need to have a wider understanding of how to evaluate our nutrient solution. Beyond cost per gallon, there's volume and frequency. How much do we need to water in and how often? Well, suppose clean synthetic fertilizer brands may love to promote highly attractive low cost per gallon, recommended ECs and irrigation volumes and frequencies are much higher than a craft nutrient like those offered by hydroponic research. Low cost salts, much like the commercial agriculture fertilizers, consists of synthetics that release nutrients immediately. When you examine these fertilizer programs, it's necessary for growers to mix at higher ECs and use high volumes of water with excessive runoff. Starting with a higher EC in your reservoir will also make it necessary to increase the number of watering intervals daily. As your medium dries, the EC climbs and will result in nutrient burn without frequent irrigations. Measurements of cost over time will provide a more accurate picture of your efficiency. Calculating overall cost per gram of finished flour is a more comprehensive approach to understanding your bottom line. Well, that wraps it up for this episode of Grower's Notebook. Join us again next time as we talk about crop steering and the important concepts to understand. So like and subscribe and hit that notification button to stay up to date with the latest episodes. And don't forget to leave a comment below about what topics or information you might want us to go over in this series. I'm Melanie and thank you for watching Growers Notebook.